has COVID affected the music for the show? A big part of it is just some of the rules and regulations that we um, are working around for everyone's safety. Um, and, you know, our safety and health is the number one concern. So we are doing a fully recorded show um, where we are creating tracks and then layering vocals on top of those tracks. So that way we are only singing in the space for a short amount of time to record this record parts and then we're layering everything together and um, based on different guidelines of what is healthy and how long we can sing together we do a lot of recording for for 20 minutes or 30 minutes and then we clear that same space giving the air time to circulate and so a lot of the students have had to learn things independently on their own we're also learning about the recording process and what's worked and um, making adjustments as we go so it's trying to keep everything live and in the spirit while doing things um, on recordings and making tracks. So it's a little bit of a, um, a learning curve, but I think our students are really navigating that process uh, really well. There's no business like show business like no business I know. Everything about it is appealing. Everything the traffic will allow. Now where could you get that happy feeling when you are stealing that extra power? So essentially what we're doing is we are using the sound equipment that we had and everyone forgot about. Um, we are, we have two internal recordings for all of the accompaniment so when the actors are singing they can listen to it. And we have five microphones available for their singing. We have one set of headphones for me to listen to and a set of headphones for Sarah to listen into so she can hear them sing. And every single time we record, we create however many microphones. If we have five microphones singing, every single time we record it, we record five separate files. So at the end of a night, we can have anywhere between like 50 and 60 individual files, which is very helpful because we, have, we, have, we don't have to scrap any takes then. So one person kind of has an off take, we just use a different scrap tape with theirs. And the plan is to mix it all down into manageable, usable files and play back and use them for video recording of The Melody Lingers On. We're having a heat wave, a tropical heat wave. The way So doing a musical during COVID has been very interesting. Um, we have to film our vocals separate from uh, our filming of the dancing and the blocking. It's kind of interesting to do the vocals separate because it kind of gets us prepared for if we ever to do a um, album, which is super fun. Um, it feels totally safe. Everyone has to wear their mask, obviously, and we're not allowed to sing in front of everyone at once. So it's been interesting. And again, remember, this volume is okay. This means I need more. This means less. Okay. So the challenge, I think, or difference between um, having our vocals pre-recorded um, versus just saying them if we were naturally in a, if times were normal, um, the hardest part for me, I think, is having the acting be there. So when I film my stuff separately, um, I don't really, I feel like I don't act. So when I'm on stage, I am acting. You only can see, obviously, half my face. So like, you have to act through the mask, I think. But at the same time, it's hard when I film my vocals two weeks, three weeks earlier, so maybe I was feeling a different way than I am the day we film. Their nose is in the air, high hats and arrow collars, white hats and lots of dollars, spending every dime for a wonderful time. It's important to expose audiences and our students to Irving Berlin's music because he's a, he's, uh, one of the greats. He's one of the grandfathers of this uh, type of music. He also really transitioned us from the 
30s and 40s into the golden age of musical theater. His expanse of music is pretty astounding. And the great thing is, is every song we do, there's someone in the audience who that's going to be their favorite song. Uh, some of the well-known songs like Cheek to Cheek or Putting on the Ritz, those are songs that our students are somewhat familiar with or, or might have heard. But again, for our generation, that is what they grew up with. And so this is music for storytelling. It's of a time period. And there's, um, again, just a, such a wealth of information in historically of, in this music that Irving Berlin wrote. Choreographing with social distancing was difficult because my go-to is always partner dancing but and like lifts and stuff because in one of our numbers putting on the Ritz we wanted to do big grand tricks and a big part of that was partnering lifts so getting rid of that took got rid of like a little section of what I really wanted to do but then it got it got me being more creative me and Trevor both more creative with um how to make big spectacles without having to get people up high in the air. Hey, that music touching your heart. Hear that trombone busting a bar. Come, 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 let us start. I think there is a pressure of being a student choreographer versus a faculty. I think uh, obviously you have your professors kind of overseeing your work. So you uh, not only want to do a good job for your cast and your fellow peers, but also for those professors who are kind of keeping an eye on the work you are putting into the show. So definitely a little pressure, but a good one. My favorite part about choreographing so far was the moments where we randomly choose to do something and it turns out to be the coolest thing ever. Like on the spot, let's do this and it ends up being so cool. What was it like recording TAP tonight? Um, it was very specific, it was uh, very particular. You had to make sure you want to get every single sound very clear, very crisp, so that it picks up on the microphone. You want to make sure that you're in sync with your fellow tappers, just so it sounds like one person is tapping and not multiple people are tapping. You want to make sure you're very consistent and very precise. I think what I'll take after recording TAP is the fact that when you're recording tap, there's really nowhere to hide your sounds. Like you really need to be precise, you need to be exact because uh, the audience and the crew and the director, they're gonna know when you're faking it or when there's a sound that's off 
and you're gonna know as well and it's gonna distract you so I think overall it's just helps me pay more attention to uh, to be more precise with my sounds while I'm tap dancing It's a tap dance, it's a tap piece, it's a tap number. And the taps are what make, makes the number alive. Um, so I feel like as, as many, um, as no matter how much you are on stage, you are like being very expressive and doing everything you can and you have the, the you, you, you're singing the song and you're hearing the song playing, but without the taps, it doesn't make any sense for you to really um, tap. If you can't hear the sounds and it's just, it would be disappointing. This is the bigger sound. This is your full flap. So that <laughs> needs to go where your let is. Oh yeah, 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 those don't line up. <laughs> one, <laughs> one, two, eight. <laughs> flap yourself. Um, so what I'll take away from the show is the opportunity that we had to choreograph a lot of the dances. Um, I've never done anything like that before. I've never been a student choreographer, choreographer. Um, and it was just a really interesting opportunity to get to teach my peers dances and watch them come to life on the stage. dances we were teamed up with another choreographer so both of my favorite songs uh, Heat Wave and Cheek to Cheek were numbers that I choreographed with another person so I really like being able to work with my peers to come up with dances. <laughs> People should come see the show because although it's full of older tunes, it involves jazz dance, hip hop dance, tap, and ballet. So we've got lots of genres covered, so there's something for everyone.